Now to a story of perseverance and healing. A teenager is finally home after a very serious crash in early August that almost took her life and injured two other teens. We've been following the story for months now, really. The crash happened on I-65 when Megan Murray and her, her friends were on their way to show cattle at the State Fair. News 8 Sierra Hagnite sat down with Megan and her family tonight, 24 hours after her return home. So. Yeah, we have a very update, very happy update on this story. Finally, you guys, Megan Murray spent 98 days between four different hospitals. Now, she had the most severe injuries of all three of the girls that were involved in the crash. But despite all the reasons that Megan could have given in to the negative situation that she found herself in, she pushed through with positivity and now is reunited with her entire family for the first time in more than three months. The last time Megan Murray pulled into her Trafalgar driveway, the leaves were still green. Now she's a year older and a lifetime wiser. I've had a couple of hard days where I've been like, all right, I just, want, I just want to leave and I want to go home. After the crash that ejected Megan from a truck on I-65, she suffered a long list of injuries, including a broken leg, pelvis, ribs, fingers. She had a brain bleed along with a list of other internal injuries that resulted in her needing about 10 surgeries and 45 units of blood over the next 98 days that she would spend between four hospitals. When I finally asked the question of why am I in the hospital, uh, I was told I was in a car wreck. But funny story, I thought it was my dad and I that were in the car wreck, and so I didn't find out until a little bit after that that it was all of us. Megan's memory stops the day before the crash on August 2nd and picks back up halfway through September. But her mom, Michelle, remembers every second of what became her worst nightmare. Early on, I, I was trying to prepare myself for everything, trying to prepare myself for if she didn't come home. Um, that was really hard. While Megan's progress has been nothing short of a miracle, the road to recovery has not been easy. In the next several weeks um, was full of ups and downs and the unknown still. Um, it probably wasn't until week seven when they started to bring her off of all the sedation medicines that we realized that, okay, I think we've kind of gotten over most of the big hurdles. Despite having every reason to fall into negativity, Megan has fought tooth and nail to heal and somehow found a way to stay positive. Because I know if I'm negative, I won't get any better. And I can't afford to not get better. Now Megan is able to mostly get around on her own with the help of a walker while she continues therapy to rebuild her strength, only needing a wheelchair if she will be on her feet for a long period of time. I prayed every day every hour, <laughs> sometimes every minute of every hour, um, and he answered them for us. My perspective on life has changed a lot. It's one minute you're here, and the next minute you could be gone. And I, I live that. <laughs> Megan does still need two surgeries to remove her gallbladder and to remove screws from her elbow, but she isn't letting this slow down any of her goals. In addition to continuing to heal, Megan still plans to graduate in May with her class and hopes to attend her dream school of Texas A&M in the fall. Reporting, I'm Sierra Hignite, Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook.